Welcome back to Hidden Power. Today is a very special episode. We are joined by Jake from Game Explain to discuss all of the new Pokemon rumors. We're talking Scarlet and Violet DLC, Generation 5 remakes, Switch 2. We discuss the state of the Pokemon franchise, and there's even a little bit of Zelda talk. My name is Dusty Go Goat. With me is Lumios Post. Hello. And Soul Silver Art. What's up? Enjoy the episode. Jake, thank you so much for being here with us. How are you doing today? Oh, doing so well. So happy to be on the pod. I can't believe you guys made room for me. Excited to talk about Pokemon. Yeah, man, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, it's funny how we actually met. So, Jake, you were on Twitter uh, reading some rumors, reading some leaks, and uh, you kind of you kind of put a call out to the world. Actually, no, no, you put you put a call out to Soul Silver Art specifically, and then we said, "Dude, come on the podcast, and Soul will explain everything to you." Sure, I yeah, I definitely appreciate this act of kindness uh, being being shown to me, <laughs> making sure I've got the the right ideas about all of this stuff. Do you want to let us know what your background is? Um, yeah, so right now I work over at uh, Game Explain. That's when you where you can see a lot of my content covering all sorts of uh, video games. I'm a big fighting game guy, but I love Pokemon, and I think I did probably the the lion's share of the coverage leading up to Scarlet and Violet. So did a lot of Pokemon stuff there, went to all the previews, did the demos, that kind of thing. And um, in addition to all that, I'm a writer and comedian. So I still like kind of perform around town every so often. I don't tour anymore and um, have a background in screenwriting. And I'm currently writing a novel. So that's Dude. Wow. This. The, yeah. the fact that you have so many accolades that are in real life and are not just based around your YouTube channel or Instagram. I love that. Well, like this is very new for the for the channel. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. Thank you. What was the thing that initiated you to tweet out to Soul Silver Art? Was there something in particular that really got your attention? Yeah. OK, there was it was one of these days. I'm sure you, you guys cover it all the time. There are these coup rumors. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it's like some something that we call a riddle that I'm saying is maybe not. Uh, the, the technical term riddle but you know i mm, see soul silver true. out here on twitter <laughs> all the time writing novels of his own and breaking down all of these all of these riddles the rumors, write whatever book. it is yeah no exactly i and i sit there and i gotta tell you i i get two sentences into these into these long tweets and i'm gone i'm already lost i don't even <laughs> I, I can't believe what's going on here it's it's some of the yeah so some of the really the craziest stuff so you know i'm sitting in the game explain i'm doing my job and my boss is like, hey, there's a lot of Pokemon rumors swirling around. Jake, you want to make a video about this? And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I start looking at all the rumors and I'm like, okay, maybe I can just get like the sweet and easy from Soul right here. So I'm going to put out this tweet and then maybe I can, I can get all the juice I need, get this video done, move on with the rest of my life. So but was it? Kinda, what, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's hilarious. What I typically do is just make up if, if I'm confused by some of the rumors, I just make up some new rumors and add that to the pile. Oh, my uh, God. He just makes up fake rumors just to <laughs> confuse you to make your job easier. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I didn't actually <laughs> think of that downstream effect. So I'm sorry about that, Jake. Uh, but so what was the was was the call to action from your boss mm. about the Gen 5 remakes or was it about the DLC information? Gen, it was about next game stuff, Gen mm, Five. Okay. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not so much for DLC. Yeah. Sol, do you wanna you wanna give a little bit of? Let's just get into this a little bit. You wanna give a little bit of foundation of what? I what mean, is the? Let me ask. What is yeah, the go. status in your eyes as a, as a professional in this field? Do you feel like you know what that next Pokemon game is, and how how sure are you of that? That's what I want to know. Uh, as a professional in this field. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty okay. sure. <laughs> and I do think I, I know what it is. Um, and that's like, big coming from Soul, for the record. Soul is the kind of guy who they can reveal something in a trailer, and he'll be like, well, we don't know 100% yet because the DLC is not out yet. So him saying pretty sure is big. <laughs> He's okay, big and, boy. And what do we feel that it is? We feel that it's very close to something related to Gen 5. <laughs> Gen 5 remakes uh, i'm i'm kind of vague with this stuff but okay yes um we can get into it a little more about like i mean what's been I, yeah just just give them like a foundation like so like like gen 5 remake has been hinted right mm -hmm. riddler ku had said i think he put up a, the initial poll was what game would you expect next or it was like what was on your wish list and he said mm -hmm. let's go he said let's go unova he said legends kiram he said black three white three and then he said 
Paradox Unova, which is that's where like the that's where the the rabbit hole starts, right? Because you go, okay, well that's not anything that we've ever expected. That has all of these uh, you know all these other implications, tie-ins to Scarlet and Violet, etc., mm-hmm. etc. Et we did three episodes about like four or five hours worth of analysis on that over the last month, but <laughs> I think now my 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 hopes are actually very low at this point. <laughs> my, my, like I think after, it's going to end up being like an Ilka game. Everything that we've done, <laughs> after everything we've talked about, we're just that we're at the low point. Of yeah, we're 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 like in the lowest point. <laughs> mine are on the... reasonably high. What are y'all talking about? Yeah. mine are actually kind of high. After yesterday, I don't know if you guys heard the news about like the new Switch stuff. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We want to talk about that at some point as well. Yeah, you I just put out. Yeah. yeah, we can we can just go for it. I I just put yeah. out a tweet today about like okay, so if there's a new Switch coming out. Uh, late 2024 does that mean you know like that lines up perfectly with the next pokemon game that is to come out so like you know they they release yearly at this point and it's usually late in the year like november usually so yeah if there's a new switch coming out around the same time i mean it's not wait like a second though it. don't you feel like the new pokemon game if there's a new switch coming out let's say it's coming out in november as these things mm-hmm. do this and is 2024 right the right yes okay and uh and you've got a new pokemon game supposedly coming out probably in November, as these right. things do. Yes. Do you really think that the Pokemon game would would be for the Switch successor and not for the Switch that currently exists? I don't think so. I think you. I, I don't know what you what what Lumi and Soul are about to say, but I think that we're not. I think the Gen Ten game is going to be on the next gen console. I have. I do not think whatever the new game is is going to be on the next Switch. However, I could be wrong because Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee was technically like a Gen 7 game. Gen 7, the other Gen 7 games were on the 3DS, and mm-hmm. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were on the Switch, so they could, they could do that. It's very mm-hmm. possible, but I feel like they'd want to save Gen 10 for like, uh, you know, like this is the, right? Also, I feel like there's an issue of like, um, what is it called? Like, like user base, right? If, if not every, based. yeah, install base. If there's mm-hmm. not actually like a huge amount of people who have the next, uh, you know, if there's like a four month difference between the launch of the system, what if there's a shortage and no one has the system? Yeah, yeah Why yeah, would yeah. you drop a Pokemon game it's four true. months later? That's a possibility. But at the same time, uh, if the Switch is, you know, we don't know what the what the console could look like. If the Switch Two or the new Switch, whatever you want to call it, is backwards compatible, then yeah, then no problem. Black that's two, really, white two. That's really the key. Yeah, that's really yeah. the key. I. I mean, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on this. I'm sure everybody in this call is knows more about this kind of stuff than I do. But uh, couldn't it still be, it's for the Switch, but it still look better and play better on the new console? In a similar sure, way to yeah. how Switch games look and play better on an OLED versus a you know regular old Switch like I have. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, uh, I just think that this is that's not how Game Freak operates. You know what I mean? They're they're playing a numbers game. This is the most mass appeal product you can think of. And I just said it, but um, Pokemon Black Two, White Two. You know what I mean? The 3DS comes out, mm-hmm. and the new Pokemon games are still for the the DS. Yeah. I remember yeah. I remember playing that thing on my 3DS. Yeah, and right. I do think based on how the Switch works, because the Switch already does a fair amount of variable uh performance due to the nature of the console whether it be handheld or docked uh right. i do think there is a chance that you could see that variable performance extend to something like a switch 2 and maybe it is what you're saying it is you put this switch game this this pokemon switch game on your switch 2 and it does have you know enhancements for that console but i almost feel like that might be nature of the console and not anything game freaks doing on their end you know right, I, my right. my understanding of this company is that they are trying to put the product together up until that last moment and some of these extra accoutrements that we've come to expect in the modern gaming era you just have mm-hmm. to you, you got to wait an extra year for those you got to yeah, wait yeah. till the next round yeah. and who's to say let's say they who's to say they they don't just like market the new pokemon game to be played on the new Switch, even though it can, it's just like a Nintendo Switch totally. game, right? They'd be like, play the new Pokemon Black 2 and 3, whatever the heck, on your new Nintendo Switch. That's the yeah. commercial, yeah. right? The best well, place to play. The <laughs> yeah, the Pokemon. best place to play. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. Well, they even, for, for Black 2 and White 2, while Black 2 and White 2 was on the DS, one of the like tie-in games that was relatively important to it was... Uh, the Dream Radar, it gave you access to the Therium forms, and that was 3DS only, wasn't it? 
So maybe we get something kind of like that with the new Switch. I don't know. That's yeah. You know what else? Purely speculative. No, yeah, yeah. Say it. (laughs) I we got a comment uh, that I wanted to just bring up. So say what you're gonna say because I think no. I mean, I'm probably gonna say the same thing, which is just that the Dream World stuff is very related Mm -hmm. to Scarlet and Violet and Black and White and Gen Five and all that. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say Pokemon Sleep. Because that's, oh, what, the no, comment, I mean, that's, that's what the that's comment was about. Too. I'm trying to pull it up right here. I don't have it, but... I mean, sleep would tie into it well, too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, how cool would that be if, like, because in... So I, I, so it this kind is of an, is, like, a dream This world. is another segment I wanted to talk about. JK, have you been playing Pokemon Sleep? I I have I, I have a very negative opinion of it. Oh, just okay. as a warning. Well, okay, let's okay, hear great. it. You're wrong, but okay. It, it's, just, it's just boring. It's a, it's a bad <laughs> sleep tracker. The yes. game part, the game parts of it are barely tangible. I can't believe it took these these dum dums so long to make it. Bro, I, it's I so it. much it's fun. Game. It's no. all in the appeal of the visual art style. It is the most okay. adorable thing in the whole world. I wake up every morning, I go to bed, I'm like, ooh, this is. I've already spent five dollars on the app, and I and I shame me, guys. You spent five dollars. Can you, sh- can you shame me, please? <laughs> my, my man microtransacted. <laughs> he did oh, it. No. <laughs> I needed biscuits. He's a real Pokemon. The comments friend. are gonna eat him alive for it's that so one. It's so cute, guys. It's so much fun. So okay, what? Cute, and and there's like, a lot of listen. There's a lot of there's a lot of like uh there's a lot of features or a lot of like. How, how can I say this? Like, there's a lot of things in Pokemon Sleep mechanically that match up exactly with the core series games, right? Whether we're talking level, uh, level up, uh, what are they called? Like level up, uh, levels, <laughs> evolution <laughs> levels. Whether they're <laughs> evolution, whether they're evolution levels, level up, evolution level. items. Uh, Pokemon have a, uh, what are they called? Um, natures. Like, I just got an adamant Mankey, which is actually a comp- would be a competitive se- like like nature for oh, for, sure. a pri- for an annihilate or whatever. Who's to say we can't be catching Pokemon or befriending Pokemon in Pokemon Sleep and then oh, transfer them up? And do. then they have hidden abilities, right? Yeah. Just like the original mm. Dream World. I think that's, that's what they want you to do, but we have like multiple ways to already catch those Pokemon as well, right. <laughs> other than just sleeping. Sure, but, but that, what they could, yeah, I, I know, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I, but I think, I think like it'd be a nice the little appeal time. of Go was like Go offered a lot more opportunity to get like shinies and stuff because you could, uh, you know, the community days you can find like 18 shinies easily. Well, Pokemon so, Sleep I mean, does. Sleep... Yeah, Pokemon Sleep. There does seem to be plans for uh, events. Right, you can get shinies in that game. There's a, anyways. I I think it's. Where the odds like for shinies? I don't play it. So I don't know. I don't know like? yet. I My don't know the too odds old are. to pull it up. It seems like a lot of people are getting them, but it's also the first week. Uh, anyways, mm-hmm. let's go back. What? What? Yeah, I I do think it's interesting to talk, to think about, like, because Dream World was such a big deal in the Generation Five games, but the only way you could access that really was through like a web browser, and that's yeah. that's not fun. Who wants to do that? Does one oh. of y'all want to explain maybe how that ties into Scarlet and Violet for those who don't know? I, that's like a, I mean, you can do it, Jake, if you want, but no, Ruby. no, I need, I don't know, I need. Oh, to know. you need it. I need to. Yeah. Ruby, that's a that's a you kind of thing. Do you know? No? Um, I'm I'm a I have an assumption, but you yeah, correct yeah, me if I'm it. wrong. Uh, it's because of the speculation that um, and with some credible evidence to it. That paradox Pokemon are not truly from the past or the future, but are from the dream slash imagination of Sada, Turo, Heath, Heath's expedition team. Pokemon Sleep. Exactly. So they're literally Pokemon created in a dream world. Mm. Which I I still don't know if I believe this whole thing or not. I I know. I'm I'm I'm, really on the fence about it. I'm at the point now where I don't like, I remember at the beginning people had hard stances on Like it was like, no, they're real. No, they're imagined. And now I'm just like, I just, I just want to know. Please just tell us. I'm worried they won't even tell us. I just want to (laughs) know. It's uh, it's like the whole game freak thing. So (laughs) I don't care anymore. I just need to know. (laughs) They might just leave it completely open-ended at this point. So I'm just, you know. I'm not. It'd be I'm true not, to their nature if they did. I mean, mm-hmm. it it make them more strange and otherworldly, and kind of give them more of a paradox vibe. Yeah, definitely. So there there could be a connection there. It might not be exactly like that, but the whole Dream World thing with Gen Five is very interesting um, in general um, for new games. Jake, do you have um like what what are your do you have expectations for the Gen Five remakes? Oh God. Okay. Um. So yeah. Top. I mean, like top level. My for me, I just want something. Uh, 
I want something like like, like uh, Legends. I'm I'm a big Pokemon yeah. Legends fan. That game like did so much for me when that game came out. I couldn't believe how just like into it I was. It just grabbed my attention in a big way. Uh, I would love anything in the vein of Legends. But my expectation is that this will be an Ilka game. My expectation Ooh. is that Diamond and Pearl sold well enough. I think pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's at the end of the day, uh, it's it's another resource. It's something for Game Freak to lean on yeah. in the development of these. It's something games. they don't I, need to do. I, I, exactly, and yeah. especially when I'm looking at like you know you know that they're working on the DLC. You like to think that maybe they're working on some kind of patch for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> who's to say? No. Uh, but yeah, there's like there's they've always they got so many different. Uh, they're juggling so many balls. That it just kind of makes sense to me that like we did this, we just did this with Gen Four. Yeah. Why yeah. not do it again here? And, a lot and of, I think timeline wise, it makes sense just in terms of where we are with the Switch, the next one, and Pokemon in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure BDSP and Let's Go sold about the same, but the difference there being that BDSP, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl were were you know outsourced by Ilka. Just for those who yeah. are listening, where Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, that was a direct Game Freak project, um, and if they sold the same and then they outsourced one of them. Why would they not continue to outsource it? That's kind of what. That's, okay. That's, yeah. But counterpoint, a point against it being an okay. For the record, if it's just plain old black and white, like they're just going to do, uh, what is it? Glistening black and sparkling white is what the mm. bikes seem to tease. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, oh, then, <laughs> sure, it's Ilka. Like, but I don't think they would. I've said this before that Ilka would do a new story a new story with new characters no new and then my thing is ku has seemed to tease that whatever these unova games are are being set up in the indigo disc dlc with that character with the white hair he seems to be related to drayden and iris and probably directly like blood related to drayden um and so my thing is would they would they set up something be putting these things have a new character that's going to have important lore to an Ilka project. Yeah, it's funny. So uh, just this is a little bit of a sidebar. Um, I was listening to, uh, and we were talking about this off off air. I was watching the Nintendo podcast, and they were discussing exactly what you just said, Lumi. And pretty much, they just they their reaction was, "This is nothing. This is literally the stupidest thing, and it's not actually a hint." Can we defend it a little bit? For for why these like little bit of breadcrumbs, <laughs> and this is also going to be for Jake in the audience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my so, thing is, if Ku said it was a hint, there yeah, you go. <laughs> that's hint. really the. I mean, dude, that's really the uh, thing here. But a hundred percent credible leaker says something. It's probably a hundred percent credible. <laughs> I I want to ask Jake, how do you feel about Ku and the riddles and all that? Like you were you were touching yeah. on it before, but like, what's your like just stance and views on these leaks and what it what it's like? You don't have to go into like. Too yeah, much, but you know what I mean. Sure, sure. I'm anti. I'm I'm anti. Yeah, anti all around. Okay. Yeah, I'm anti. So here's the deal. I think like as fans of the games and stuff, we like leaks because we like information. Yes. And yeah, and we want new information, and it's fun to talk about, and it's fun to speculate. I totally understand that point of view. Um, for me, there is a like we call this. I think that because we like that information, we sometimes will use anything as a shield to defend the person giving it to us. And mm. I just from my experiences with the Riddler coup, we use the word riddle, but what we really mean is an obfuscation of the truth because there's no solving these riddles. There's no answer to them. They're just it's just well, listen, listen, They're more listen. like teasers. Yeah, what I mean is there's no there's take. no there's no answer I mean, without getting answer. more information. They're not they're mm. not answered until you are given confirmation because uh, yeah. there is no like logical conclusion to come to. Right. There are different places you can go. And yeah. and I and I also just feel that there is a um I don't know. To me, there's a, a clout chasing imperative with any of these people in any industry For that sure. is constantly teasing things out so that you continue to follow them and continue to engage. Because if they just told you what they knew, then you wouldn't have to follow them anymore. So mm -hmm. to me, if you are creating content, which is what Ku is doing, I need you to have a little bit more than access. And all mm. he has is access. And every single thing I've ever seen him put out to me is pedantic and uh, at worst uh, annoying. 
Yeah. Don't you think though <laughs> yeah. some of that in, in the like his style in general is because he wouldn't want to be like outed? Right no. or held responsible? No, no, because to me it's clear that Ku is um, operating from a unique place in the industry. Where I think it's, I think he has like a Chinese background, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. and and it seems like uh, with most people that would leak Pokemon, it would be pretty easy for Nintendo to kind of like uh, trace those breadcrumbs, stamp out the leaks, figure out, or not Nintendo, but po- the Pokemon company. And right. I think where Koo is operating from, it actually might be more difficult for the Pokemon company to impose on a Chinese leaker specifically due to um, the kind of the kind of reach that would extend in, a, in that kind of country. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I think, I don't know, I think this is kind of a business for Koo, and I think there there are ways that he could give information while still protecting whoever his source are that that isn't so his his riddles just need to get better like his riddles are not they're not fun to engage with and I feel like it's a um like an ink blot test you know what I mean it's like yeah. you can you can really figure out ways to draw connections to it's like putting together constellations in the sky you can kind of make it whatever you really want to make it if your argumentative skills are good enough that's how our youtube channels run i think his (laughs) legends uh his legends riddle which was that collage i i know so you'll remember it but uh dusty jake i don't know if y'all remember but it was this collage with images and like the one i always think of that was really good was one of the images was from one piece it was zorro from one piece and some girl i don't i'm not a one piece uh watcher i'm sorry but uh it's this girl who like has some kind of power connected to spirits and ghosts and it was from like an important arc about zoro and so it was ku teasing zoro arc ghost type and like it was a bunch of images like that and i thought that was worlds of fun i I cool okay good (laughs) the thing is with that with that one it was difficult (laughs) i mean it was easier because when you're teasing already known pokemon that's like that's so easy because people have an idea of what you're trying to go for but yeah you're right because it was all evolutions or forms of it was all it was all regional forms of yeah evolution Mm -hmm. so it was just like it's already they're already known so you can actually properly tease them when you're teasing things that like pokemon that you've never seen before it's just like oh yeah this is a cow with uh wings you know like or you know something like that it's really hard to just be like oh yeah there's a it's like uh it was the the iono thing y'all remember the iono uh short last year where like she gets on she's like you have to guess who my partner pokemon is yeah and she gives you some details about but it's like we can't true. guess that. That's a new Pokemon. We don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so true. Anyway, I, I brought that up just to like, it's like laying the foundation, basically, because the main thing is that we believe on this podcast, at least, <laughs> you don't have to agree with us, but we believe that he has real information. Like, it's it's always accurate information. Mm. I think one of the main things that people get really wrong about Ku's riddles is that I mean, I agree with you. First of all, I agree with you that riddles is probably not the right word. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, just, but, it, but it's 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 like how we call uh, Pokemon theories theories. They're not theories. They're like hypotheses. I, that's true. Right? That's very true as sure. well. But it's um, ca- or like we call everything a leak, but it's really just like someone on 4chan, right? Yeah, it's I, think it, I think I think it's yeah. until from, proven accurate. I think it stems from that he doesn't speak like perfect English, so he probably was just like, "This is a riddle," and that's <laughs> that's what it is. That's fair. It's, it's like a little guess, but anyway um well what do you call it you know i don't know really i mean it's like it's like they're like hints i mean if you put coos tees on a social media called x well then (laughs) you're you're advertising something completely different from pokemon (laughs) we'll get it we'll keep going with the x jokes subscribe to our patreon (laughs) (laughs) subscribe to our patreon if you're enjoying this episode consider supporting hidden power on patreon or youtube channel memberships we have three tiers and the lowest tier starts at just five dollars a month supporters get access to our secret discord server and help control the direction of the podcast this is the same discord where we're recording the podcast right now we interact here daily this discord server is actually where we form the ideas for each episode if you ask a question we're going to answer it on the show supporters also get priority responses in the comments our love and friendship 
You get that. You get a yes. little bit of that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our favoritism. We like you the best. And if you want something a little bit more tangible, we have merch. What do you guys think about the merch? Beautiful. The merch is great. We've got we've got Team Lumi in a in a beautiful blue. Team Dusty. The in best a, one. In a forest green, and uh, we got Team Soul in a blood red. Buy a T-shirt. Show your allegiance. And if to Team Lumi. <laughs> to du to Team Dusty, and if you act and if you want something a little bit more subdued, uh, this is actually this is another logo that we made originally for the show. We didn't actually end up using this as a logo, but I thought it made a great merch design. It's friends. literally a beta design. You guys it's, love yeah. our beta videos. I love this so it's much. Retro yeah. hidden power. And look, when you turn around, this is literally my favorite shirt. It's literally my favorite shirt. Thank you everyone for watching and subscribing. And now back to the video. I don't, now I've lost my train of thought about where I was going with that, but just. Laying the foundation of just like that he he has real information. Um and yeah, I that's where I that's where I left off. <laughs> no, yeah, I and I, I and I feel like I'm surprised to hear from you. It sounds like you are all are kind of giving a nod to there are people in the community that think maybe this person is not reliable, which even oh, yeah, I'm like like are. I'm like a bona fide hater, but it's pretty obvious to me that right. this person mm -hmm. has legitimate insider sources like i don't right yeah no okay. i get i get comments i did a uh, video just two weeks back on um hey you know unova remakes like talking about the different ideas that they could take uh and like there were legitimately several comments that were like don't know why people still trust this coup guy he's unreliable and it's like is he so so here's where it comes from i think and this goes back to what i was thinking about earlier is that people overcomplicate these things mm. it's when you look at him saying you know, uh, is there going to be a uh, Paradox Unova, Black White 3, whatever, all those options. Like, he's talking about a, a Unova game. That's it. <laughs> like That's, like, literally how simple it is. A lot of times, we overcomplicate it in the name of, like, it being a riddle, and we have to figure out, like, all these scientific equations to figure it out. But most of the time, it's the most obvious, simple um, answer. He, like, he puts in, like, uh, like Mr. X here and there to like mm -hmm. try to throw people off and that's maybe where like the confusion comes in but people like just run with like their wild ideas and i kind of like that i kind of like that he causes people to like think outside the box but yeah. at the same time it's not giving them the accurate information the accurate information is usually like something really simple it's, it's like right in front of your face and you don't really yeah. see it like to illustrate what you're talking about i think a great example is he posted a picture of the black city tower and the white forest tree and everyone immediately started going oh he's teasing something about the unova games next year but then he actually had to come out and say no this this is dlc i'm teasing something about dlc yeah mm. That yeah, I think you're like right about that that point about overcomplicating things. Because I remember in the lead up to Scarlet and Violet, like the hubbub -hub -hub that was made about the like paradox Pokemon that we know now. I feel mm. I feel now in what it is, it's it's a very simple it's idea. So simple. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah, is. and it's funny in the lead up. I feel like it was made to be this like that meme of all the equations rushing at you. It's like yeah. how it's related to all this stuff. Yeah. And it, yeah, yeah. So I think sometimes there needs to be a little bit of uh, of uh, remember what we're dealing with here. I and, remember and, feeling yeah. yeah, I remember feeling very deflated after the reveal or after like playing Scarlet and Violet and finishing the game real and going to Area Zero, realizing there's really no explanation for this. It's really just gonna be up to us to interpret the paradox, the story, whatever. Yeah. Uh and and I'm like I'm still like, okay, they're gonna give us more information in DLC, right? Not necessarily. I don't think that's necessarily yeah. going to happen. This is just going to be like Ultra Beast, where it's like they give us some info, and we're just going to play with it for the next decade. Oh, this! Um, I'm I'm glad that there is a little bit of an acknowledgement on this because I wasn't yeah. sure how this would play on the pod. Because as a as a storyteller, sometimes I do get a little bit like irked at <laughs> yeah. how. Oh, I, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. No and one plays Pokemon for the story. And Not it's one and I gotta person. tell you, and it's half that, and it's half sometimes I see just in the periphery, like some people in the Pokemon community talking about things in the games, and I'm like, I played these games too. Do my yeah. eyes not work? I <laughs> it's a lot of it's, interpretation, it, you know? Like yeah, yeah, we all want to live in the Pokemon world, and it's sad yeah. that they don't actually like go that deep into the explanation, into the lore. I think there actually is a there's a healthy amount of lore. But it's like yes. it leaves us room to just like fill in the gaps, right? It's like the classic. I mean, for me, I think this is the most hilarious example of what I don't want, which mm. is like when the solo movie came out and they're like, you're Han Solo because you're alone. 
All right, that's like so stupid. We don't need that kind of explanation, and I don't really want that. For, they like, really a lot do of that in Pokemon. that movie. Is that why his name's Han Solo? Yes. I just dropped Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. I just dropped Star Wars. <laughs> I, I, this reminds me of when I taught a screenwriting class. I described a problem as uh, the he was there all along problem. And I always used to illustrate it. It's like season two of a show that's set in a high school. And it's like this kid that was your classmate the whole time. But they weren't a character in season one. And right. it's like, no, no, they, yeah, they he were was there all along. along. <laughs> he, was, he was there. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, They'll, like, they'll do flashback scenes where yeah, they now like, put the character in. But like if you go back and actually watch the episode he was not there no that's funny not. that's funny yeah. that's super funny that's like all of marvel yeah yeah, yeah. that's the truth time. <laughs> For sure. so yeah I, I what are your opinions on scarlet and violet in general did i mean you obviously played it you review or you you know covered yeah. scarlet and violet mm -hmm. leading up to it uh on game yeah. explain um i i really like a lot of what Scarlet and Violet is trying to do. I think the execution is particularly poor and hard to ignore. Um, I really like the games, though. Like, playing through that campaign for the first time, having, like, the three different campaigns to yeah. participate in. I'm a, I'm a proponent of open world. I like it. I think it's, like, a nice... I, I kind of wish that both Pokemon games existed and there was, like, the more, like, route-focused um, kind of linear thing going on with uh, that kind of level design but I, I i like the open world stuff and i think for me the biggest disappointments were uh from it were that the fluidity of legends arceus was lost and i loved that in that game i loved just like the the speed at which i was running around i throw my pokeball out the battle starts like i couldn't believe it i was like wow this is this is a a new feeling that i I've fluidity never is the word me. yeah mm. man it was incredible it, you, and a lot of that i thought we would see return with like the let's go feature but even yeah. now it was so clunky. Oh my god, it, it like painfully clunky, and and it really stunk to see, especially having Legends Arceus show up earlier in that year. But um, for me, I think I think Scarlet and Violet really is a good. A case study for what Pokemon is really good at and what they're also not so good at. Mm -hmm. uh, character design. Pokemon Company maybe doesn't get enough credit for. Oh, dude. The we take it for granted. It is dude. so shockingly good. All, all, every character. Everyone. Even if you don't like it, even if you don't like it, you have to be like mm -hmm. you have to recognize it's just not for you. It's still perfect. Yeah. I think perfect. The yeah. reason why I don't play like there's so many monster catching games, right, or mm. collecting games, whatever. That like try to do the Pokemon formula, and they all suffer because their their monsters look like, like uh like like stick figures or like they have like the same face. Every character has the same face. Mm. And a, a big part of it. So for me you're an has artist. Always... I don't know if you want to chime in. Oh please. Oh no, you were you were saying something. Go for it. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've I've never gotten to like express this opinion in content before, so this is exciting for me. But Let's something I think about something I think about a lot with Pokemon is that um, you know these are creatures and worlds and characters that don't just exist in the game. We get to see them in these in the spinoffs. We get to see them in the anime. We get to see them in the merch. We get to see them in just like all sorts of multimedia stuff. And it helps make them, round them out in our minds and create this world that is more than what it just than just what it is in the games. So when you see all of these games try to be Pokemon, try to do Pokemon better than Pokemon, they don't have this unbelievably powerful world of other just like art and material to pull on mm -hmm. in the player's head. And you know, there's so many studies about like how easier it is to get a consumer or an audience member to get attached to something they already know rather than introduce them to something new. And I mm -hmm. think that like Pokemon is the epitome of this. It is it is not just the games, it's everything. It's the fact that we are speculating and in that world right now. And you can't do that with these other po Pokemon like games. Mm -hmm. um, so that yeah, so that's something that I think has always stood out to me with the franchise, and I feel like Scarlet and Violet to to bring it back there, um, it like has just enough going on in it that it's like pushing all of these little buttons for longtime Pokemon fans with the open world, with the way that the gyms are done, and it's like you like I think all of us imagined this kind of game for such oh, a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's not quite it. 
but no. it's close yeah. to that. It's the it's the you know what I mean? It's cl as close as they've ever gotten to this thing that we've all been imagining for a long time. Even the fact that none of us did. I'm sure none of us spent too much time doing this. But even the fact that you, for some reason in this game, can uh, just do co-op running around in the open world mm -hmm. and have a friend with you. That's a fully yeah. functioning friend. It's what's, like yep. there's something to that, yeah. Well, but what's yeah. funny though is, or it's, what's what's interesting is that like Scarlet and Violet on paper has a lot of these features that we've been dreaming about for ten years, but like you said earlier, uh, yeah. Legends Arceus is really the game that ha had me feeling like I was mm -hmm. entering, uh, what is it called, Petal Petalberg. Uh, uh, no, what is it called? Yeah, Vir Viridian City Forest. A... Viridian Forest for the first time, right? Yeah. Like, like finding, like uh, battling all the bug bug catchers and finding a wild Pikachu. Like that's the feeling that I got for the first time on my blue cartridge in whatever year it was. But when mm -hmm. I played Legends Arceus, I actually felt like I was like that kid again, or actually living out that anime experience. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, like I remember one one memory from Legends Arceus that I always have that's so fond was I wanted to use a weird ear on my team. So I'm looking for Stantler and I come across this field and they're literally just like running around me. Like hey. like almost like deer in the wild. Yeah. And like even in Scarlet and Violet, the, the Pokemon are moving and kind of just being in their environment. It wasn't quite the same yeah. as Legends. I mean, just everything about Legends, ah, uh, man, that, that that is a great game. And it, and it makes, right. yeah. It, yeah, and it makes you wonder, like maybe the Pokemon franchise would be better off going into this like, uh, into this like action style game, right, or mm. gameplay. Um, I don't really know if that's the the full. I don't know if that's the 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 real solution. I or like you know if that's the only th way it has to be. I actually like that there's a couple different options of ways to play Pokemon. Just like you're saying, like yeah. there's a lot of ways to consume the franchise in general. I I think having options in our gameplay is also going to be super valuable going forward. 100%. Uh, just the ability to aim and throw a Pokeball at my own volition Dude, is something I've... That. Mm -hmm. that is a that is the realization of a of something that I feel like we've we've all wanted since Pokemon existed. But I will say I do think that there is this almost like platonic ideal of Pokemon that if you asked me, ha they have been I think getting away from it ever since the first games, and I'm one of those people, and I know, I know that go. doesn't go Gen over. I know that doesn't. I know, I know, I know it doesn't go over well. But there, <laughs> there's stuff that the first game did that I think no other game has done as well. And I'm always kind of looking for a, a return to those kinds of feelings. Do mm -hmm. are people interested in hearing about this? Or is this, oh yeah, is this a, yeah, go okay. for it. Okay, okay. I So to me, the thing that's beautiful... I think Pokemon Red and Blue are one of the best uh, made games of all time. And mm, what's... Okay. I let really him, believe in this. Cook. And, I, and I know what people are going to say. I know I know the, the glitches, the battle system. I know all of this stuff. I know it's there. But the thing that, to me, that is beautiful about this video game is that it is about simple, borderline, meaningless choices. You are a kid out on an adventure. The first thing you've got to do, it's it's all about the freedom to make these choices. So when you mm -hmm. are this kid, you've, you're in this town, the first thing that you get is choose between one of these three Pokemon. That's your first choice. And that choice no, gives I'll, you... I'll... I'll stop mm, you there. Please. The first choice you make is it's which version of the, of the game that you're going to get. Okay, which... you ruined my punchline. <laughs> I was going to I was going to get to that and I was going right, to go right, but sorry. actually and I said <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um but, and what I love about this is this freedom of choice. The first choice the, the 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 choice in your starter Pokemon is what liberates you. It gives you the freedom to leave your town that you've been stuck in this whole time because it was too dangerous to go off on your own. And from there, like you choose your four moves. You get to choose if you want this game to be easy or hard. Are you going to grind in the wild and make it easy or are you just going to keep going and make it hard? Uh you get to choose if you're going to have these party members join you. These weird little guys or choose to just level up your Charizard all the way through and have them carry you through the game. And I think that in future games, you know, they add in like, um, even looking at like gold and silver, because a lot of people ask me, they're like, well, why wouldn't you say that these are better? And I think they are more interesting and, and maybe even better games in some ways. But to me, you add in breeding, you add in berries, you add in Lugia and Ho-Oh being all the time the day events. Main, sure, sure. And all of these systems all of a sudden are now on top of what I think was this really pure uh, experience and it's overcomplicating it in a way. Um, so sure. yeah, so I, I like the babies. I, I don't, I've never liked the babies. I, I feel like that's, that's, it's never interested me. And then like, I think there's like an annoying focus on NPCs sometimes in modern mm. Pokemon games in a way that I don't super love. 
So, which is something I really kind of liked about Legends Arceus when I'm just like out there doing my own thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like, like, is our Pokemon Red and Blue like my favorite games? Actually, no, but I do think they're the best. I think, so, you know, th- this is something hmm. I don't think I've ever thought about because you're right. Even every single game adds on a new function, yeah. whether it's or, or gimmick, right? And the, they're, they're ways to entice new players, but by diluting the like the core experience of what a pokemon game is whether it's you know contests or you know now all of a sudden you have like hidden abilities you have abilities you have uh you know this all of a sudden battling gets more complex with like uh you know the special physical split there's like the sure. battle tower there's all these extra things not even to mention any of the gimmicks right mm-hmm. mega gigantamax i think you make a really good point um and it it is true like how how bare bones those games are i've always felt like Pokemon was secretly low key an open world game, or at least some of the older ones, right? And there were some elements yeah. of that when it comes to like battling or or you know taking on the gyms into a- any order you want. Like you can kind of skip getting cut and then go up. You know you don't even need to fight Lieutenant Surge. There's some elements like that, um, but and, and so like it makes me think. Like I I mean I've always felt like open world Pokemon games could be a really strong thing. It just I'm realizing that maybe it's just too big of a I don't know. It's like maybe the worlds are too big for it to be actually, you know, fun or implemented correctly. Or maybe, maybe it, uh, there's a lot of things that could prevent an uh, like a modern engine open world Pokemon game from like actually being fulfilling. But I don't know. It, at, at this point, I'm like they it, they're right there. They could do it, and I don't know if it's actually ever gonna come to fruition, it's, or if like Legends is yeah. just gonna be a highlight for the next decade. It, I I think what makes it really tough is that um, the you know the endless expansion of the Pokemon world, and I think ultimately ultimately the the thing that I want to be focused on, I want a Pokemon game that's about meaningful choices, mm. and not meaningful in terms of like they drastically change like how the game goes, but meaningful for my own like personal experience. And a material way I think about this all the time is like HMs. I think we all probably agree HMs annoying, annoying. Yeah. Yeah. But they're and, supposed and, to be annoying. Right. right, and, and but and that's what the makes the thing. Pokemon on your team valuable. Right, and in modern Pokemon games, what you get instead of HMs are um, okay. I'm gonna ride this weird ear around. I'm gonna fly this specific creature around. I'm gonna use this thing, and I and I I really don't like that it's the same for everybody. I I don't mm-hmm. like that we're all using the same thing, and I think it would be so much more powerful if it was like okay, we're about to like surf across this lake. You can use. Any number of these guys, it doesn't even have to be a freaking swimming it just, one. It can just be a flying one, and you're like skirt skirting on the top. You know what I mean? It's like it's just make yeah, it, figure it out, make it work. Pidgey. They did a little then, bit of that. That's, that's in, about in, your experience, you know. Yeah. In the Gen Three yeah. remakes, there was a little bit of that where there were three Surf Pokemon that you could use: Sharpedo, yeah. Whalmer, or Kyogre, which is Let's interesting go as well, really. Because yeah, I mean, oh, you could dude, ride I on forgot. Gyarados or Lapras. <laughs> you, oh, you know, I, mean? I hate Let's go. So that's saying something. Oh no, yeah. no. Okay, I kind of go off. Let's go, and that was a big part for me. Is that I felt like the game cared about how I felt as a player and my connection to Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Like you beat a gym, and I go Eevee, high five, let's go. Dude. Dude, it's like heck yes. Look at that connection I've got it's with my true. little dude. And like yeah. that part of it, I was like, oh my god, they they understand the emotional connection. They know I've got a Snorlax, and I I need to ride on his belly. Yeah. They know. <laughs> you, like, I they need know. to do. That. Yes, I that's need that. to. Obviously, that's what I'm gonna do. It's I wish like, I could ride in Kangaskhan's mm. pouch. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would have. Wait, cool. that, that right. was a missed that opportunity. Was, was it in there? You could ride on Kangaskhan. Was it in the pouch? I gotta Somebody look it up. I'm, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. But, but yeah, it. so the, the but the thing for me is that like nothing in the game was like Jake, you gotta get the Snorlax and you gotta ride on its belly. It was just, hey, do you have a Snorlax? Did you, you bring can it out do of the that? Pl- you can. Let's You're go. on its shoulder. Oh, <laughs> You're on its shoulder though, not its pouch. But Eevee's, Eevee's in the pouch. It, Eevee's in the pouch. Yeah. yeah. Eevee's, Eevee's in, the in the pouch. That's good. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, plus, I love that Let's Go art style. I know some people don't like it. To me, that's a great art style. I'm a huge defender. Yeah, the, the colors, dude. I'm all about the colors, mm, man. Mm. Best art style on the Switch, I would say. And I am a big Let's Go hater. I think so, too, actually. I If I could pick one, it might be that one. I really like it. Because yeah. Yeah, while, sure. yeah, while, while Arceus was, like, pretty, it was still kind of muddy, right? Like, it still yeah, felt like, time. okay, this could have been, like, polished a little bit more. I feel like... I felt like a lot of that was a choice, though. Like, I felt like that was deliberate because it was... Okay. Like, they were going for, like, a watercolor theme because it's so old-timey. Mm. Uh, yeah, but they it, could... it, it added to the game for me because it felt like that. Oh, I get you. Because maybe if it's not super vivid... 
like if the colors don't aren't like super high in saturation then like, like it almost felt a little like bit more the realistic thing was like reading an old book mm -hmm. and i, I kind of liked that yeah i feel you know like what's there's... the uh you really quick you know what's the the cheat code for pokemon games by the way do do all of you have oled switches yeah no, i don't that that I gotta say that vivid mode yeah. on the OLED switch it There's makes the Pokemon mode? look how I want them to look. Really? Ah oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Now What's I have to buy an mode? OLED, and there's a Switch Two coming out next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. yeah. I agree though, 100. percent That's OLED wild. I wonder if there's something to be said about like maybe a Pokemon game really should just be limited in the scope and size of it, right? Because Let's Go is great. I think yeah. let's go. I think let's go is a ton of fun. The things I don't like about it were like deliberate choices, and they were mm. not shortcomings, right? It this, was like I don't like yeah, the but controller. deliberate choices that are bad are still bad. Fine, the but, controller, but they can fix it. They can fix so it. So bad, so bad. What is wrong with them in the controller? You can't that's, use a no, pro was, controller in that video game, but you can why play it, it handheld. <laughs> that's Game Freak logic. See, Broken that, brain. Yeah. That's why it was bad. But going back to what you were talking about, um, mm. just like the limitedness of it if yes. that's the right way to say it but i was thinking that as you were speaking jake like mm. so is the solution to make m like even more limits like they they cut the national decks so like you know let's say they they release a game where you can travel uh you can surf on like 15 different pokemon but the number of Pokemon that you can catch is like 200 and that's it. And that's it yeah. for that game. And that's, they don't add other ones because they, I'm the, totally the whole debate. That. Yeah. The whole debate is just that they don't have the resources or the capabilities, whatever you want to call it to model, like all of these Pokemon to, to travel on their back. So like you, in an ideal world, you'd mm -hmm. be like, I want to travel on every single Pokemon, and we're just like over a thousand, and they're just. I mean, in know. an ideal world, I would go to the Pokemon company and game, and I would say, "Hey, listen, it's 2023. You're yeah. a modern AAA video game developer. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to spend some more money on these games." And yeah. I understand that you think you can spend this little budget and make this huge return. I understand that, but yep. you do not know the working. ways, <laughs> right? But and I say, but you do not know the ways that it would benefit you to mm -hmm. properly invest in a studio even if it's just to get some contract workers in there and have them do all of this modeling work that we always talk about like it's some impossible thing even though it's not yeah. but but that aside no, i agree 100 percent. yeah yeah but that aside would i be overjoyed at a game that says hey there are 150 pokemon in this game it's a it's a new world and oh boy did we spend time doing mechanics you can you can yeah. toss out a fire pokemon and burn down a tree that's yeah. new like man, that'd be sick. You can toss out an ice Pokemon and freeze that lake. It's yeah. like oh, great. And then travel on top of it yes, to get to yes. items like in like in the seasons. Oh, that's let so me, cool. Let me have a connection with this guy that lets me ha do something with him specific. Let me like you know what I mean. It's like let me actually mm -hmm. use these things in a way that is different from how I used them when I was six. Yeah. And like the the games just seem so diametrically opposed to that. How um, many how many yeah. games in general are still played actively or like have like a niche community playing them like 10 years later? I can think of Skyrim, I can think of Fallout, I can think of GTA 5, the same like, company too. <laughs> Zelda, are, are they? No, that's Rockstar and then you have Bethesda. I was thinking of Bethesda. Yeah, for the and then, and then I, I would say like Breath of the Wild had a huge community like that for six years, and I think Tears of the Kingdom is gonna is definitely gonna uh, live on. But like, how many like is that? Act what I'm thinking about is like if Pokemon were to actually invest in a game and make something that's like actually groundbreaking, where right? where people could then like go on to, uh, you know, where they could like mod it, right? They could they could up people could update it, right? If they actually made like a like an ultimate Pokemon game. Would that actually be that valuable? Because like, would it be any more coveted among fans and among pop culture than think like it, the games already are? Think of it this way: the first one, Red and Blue, that's kind of what that was like, and we've yeah. been riding the Red and Blue train ever, ever since. since. Yeah. So yeah. that's a good way actually, to think about that. Yeah, yeah, if they actually made like the most epic Pokemon game for like this new generation, for Gen I 10. think it, it would it would last not not for Gen Ten for like the generation of people. Okay. Um, for, it would last for like another 10, 20 yeah. years.
Just if you think about how epic it could be. I feel like Legends I, I was the other game where I'm like, this is a this is a moment. I think Legends was the only game. Yeah, but where your like, your standards are also low. Like what with what we're talking yeah. about with what Jake what Jake just said. Like, can you imagine if they actually mm -hmm. did what he said and put actual money into yeah. it and and you know got animations for all that stuff and worked on gameplay. Well, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, what is there. the incentive for them, right? Because if they're still oh, making I, money, I know what it is. I know what the incentive money? is. So in the yeah, so money. in the in the gaming, so I I think we all recognize that Pokemon is a big deal, and obviously yes. as a property, it's like the biggest entertainment property in the world. But does it have that same? If you took everything else out of it and just looked at the gaming space, what is the cachet of Pokemon in the gaming space? It's large, but is it Minecraft? Is it yeah. Fortnite? And mm. I know that sounds a little cringe, even it's having Pokemon to say Go, it. Pokemon Go, dude. But that's a, and that's the thing. It's like, can we get? Can we put out a Pokemon game, like a AAA Pokemon game, that's out here next to next to Fortnite, and it's like got those kids in the same way. Yeah, it's got dude, like dude. every day we're going out, we're going online, we're doing. You know what I mean? And I and yeah. I really think oh, that there's something there that man. they that they could invest in. Yeah, I that um, would get kind of annoying. Right, right now, it's like they're okay just riding what they've got. I know. Yeah, that's, that's not which I understand. Though. Which I understand. Yeah. Yeah. To go back to like what you were saying, Jake, about uh, you know, like specifically when you were talking about, you know, sending out nice Pokemon to Freeze Over Lake and you said uh yeah. making a connection with a character. Yeah. Uh, one, my big dream, uh, I actually have a video that I've already recorded but I haven't posted it yet where I said this, is that like these Unova games that are coming out, instead of there being a black version and a white version, it's one version, but the choices you make as you go through the story decides if you're more for ideals or more for dreams, and That's that cool. winds up choosing if you get Zekrom or if you get Reshiram. I think that would be so... That's really cool. I mean, I would love... They're, they're not going to do it. But I would yeah. love that. That's interesting because that's not even that hard to implement given the current constraints. That that would be, you know, you you set up some like very easy, it's a binary. You set up some very easy like kind of decision making that could, lend, you know, end you up on one of those two sides. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah. And like all, all your decisions add up at the end and then yeah. that's what happens. That That's a really cool idea, Lomi. I like that a lot. Yeah. I just feel and, like, and, you know, with Pokemon games, like my thought on that is you're exactly right. It'd be easy to implement. It would be really cool. I think a lot of people would really appreciate that. But I feel like Pokemon has in this way kind of become like an old grandfather to me where it's like it'd be really cool if my grandpa took me to the beach, but he's not cool. He won't do that. You know? I wish my dad <laughs> said he loves me. That'd be really cool. cool. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a great analogy that's really cool and and we time. already already got something like that in uh legends arceus where at the end of the game you choose which legendary you want it's a it's just a it's a blatant decision you make um but i think that's really cool um yeah. all right jake let's just take it back a little bit we yeah. we do this with all of our guests we want to get to know you a little bit better so we got a couple questions speed round questions for you uh so what is your what would your pokemon type be and mm. then what would your hidden power type be uh i'm a grass boy Grass mm. boy, nice. Yeah, love love grass. It's 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 a fight though. I love I love a lot of different kinds of Pokemon. Psyduck's mm -hmm. my favorite Pokemon of all time. I love it. But, uh, but I'm a grass guy, and I think my my hidden my hidden power would be fighting. All right, Ooh. Breloom. Grass and fighting. Ooh. Yeah, love Breloom, dude. <laughs> That's cool. Love Breloom. Yeah, <laughs> That's cool. All right, so what are your Bray top on. six favorite Pokemon? This would be your dream team. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Psyduck unevolved, not letting him turn into stupid Golduck. Yeah, Golduck sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. Resent. That's right. Golduck sucks. <laughs> Re where is my Where is my alternate evolution or regional form of Golduck? He's I'm making that it. video. I'm making that video right now. Okay, okay. Because Psyduck's been in like every single. I think he's one of the few Pokemon that have been in every single Pokemon game. And yeah. He, yeah. like he's one of the well, he's like somebody's favorite up. Yeah, up he's, on the line. that's why he's in all of them. Do you need like, Masuda's Masuda. Masuda. He's Masuda's yeah, favorite. So Masuda's great taste. So, um, uh, then there's a little Machamp back here, if you can see. So Machamp, that's my number two. Love that. Um, and then I want Chestnut on the squad. Ooh. Love Chestnut. Ooh. Yes. Hot take, Chestnut. I like it. It's an yeah, acquired Chestnut's taste. Really good. People don't, Dude, I, people hate on people, Chestnut. It's so good. People need to get their eyes checked. because It Chestnut looks great really in Powdown. Cool. It looks it does, great yeah. in Scarlet and Violet. It's I've never been scruffy. particularly offended by Chestnut. I, I don't know where the hate comes from. And Chespin is Chespin <laughs> is the best starter of, of Kalos. Oh, Thank no. you. No. Finally. Froakie's yes. a dumb frog. No. And no. Don't you and say dumb frog. No. And Tongue no. Scarf? 
No. We're going tongue no. scarf. Is that disgusting? No. And the Finnegan, tongue scarf is weird. But it it should have kept the frubbles, but still <laughs> the frubbles. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I also want. Uh, I want Mewtwo. Uh, okay. Mewtwo Ooh. just day one so freaking cool when he was in Smash Melee that like blew my mind. Uh, so I love Mewtwo. Uh, and then I'm gonna toss it over to. Okay, so that's four. And uh, wait, I just oh my god, I just had it. I just had it, guys. Hold hold on, hold hold. Oh, um, Annihilate. Oh, yeah. Annihilate. Yeah. Love Annihilate. Uh, that was one of my favorite. My 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 next favorite. Uh, pal that my first. Yeah, some Gen Nine representation. Um, it really yeah, is yeah, such yeah. a. It feels like a uh, like a like an evolution that could have existed in like Gen Two. Dude, the fact that he is like powered by spite. Is just yes. an incredibly <laughs> like I aspire to that in a way, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, and then my last one has got to be. Uh, I always forget if it's the evolution or not, but Palafin, the the one. Palafin's the turn- evolution. Okay, because um, my favorite fictional character of all time is Superman. I have a lot of love for Superman. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, and the fact that they made a Pokemon that like e- that does like a Superman, Superman thing, yeah. like Clark Kent switching into that, that like. Oh, that was huge for me. So that's my team. Mm-hmm. What do you think about? Uh, what do you think about? Like, what's your take on Finizen evolving into Palafin and essentially being the same exact Pokemon? I mean, apparently, you, like, it, dude. Yes. Like, yes. Really? thank you, Jake. It. Finally, let me do you think pa- on Don't you think Palafin? It. Yes. Don't you yeah. think Palafin could have just like existed as a one-off? No. That no, evolved. That like went through its evol- Okay. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me tell you why. So, um, so the way that Pal- that Finizen evolves into Palafin, you need to do something in multiplayer, right? You need to like see you something happen. You have to happen. be in the Union Circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like this because um, Clark Kent becoming Superman, he he was always Superman. He was always kal But the thing that makes him into that is the gift of knowledge, is the gift of knowing who he is. So you go into multiplayer, you see something, you, you get knowledge you didn't have before, and now the only thing different about this creature is he's got that symbol on his chest, and he's ready to go. Like, I love this Pokemon. Yeah. That's true. It has, like, the little heart. That's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's awesome. Do you think I, it... Do I you... love... <laughs> I was gonna say I love the depth of that kind of stuff in Pokemon too, because we were talking we we're talking like bad things about Pokemon, but really good things about Pokemon is the Heck depth yeah. in the designs. Mm-hmm. Like that's incredible. Like honestly, dude, when Loxton makes a video, like it, it always blows my mind because you know he'll point out like, hey, you know this Pokemon's got this one little pixel here. Yeah, well, it turns out that pixel's actually if you look at this constellation, you can see that, and I mean it just blows your mind. Yeah. Love that. Love that so much. That's a that's a pretty powerful team. Uh definitely. What is your favorite Pokemon game? Okay. I brace yourselves. Let's go. This is nobody's gonna enjoy this. Let's go, Pikachu. <laughs> uh but that would be that would be um Pokemon Moon. Hey, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah Gen 7's Pokemon I'm Moon. It, you know what? It's I a just slog think... to get through, but it is a lot of fun. I think it... that these games are so personal. And for okay. me, mm. Pokemon Moon, it just hit at the exact right time in my life. It was when I wanted that game. I wanted a new Pokemon game more than I ever had right then and there. I had, like, taken a break for a little while from Pokemon. And Mm -hmm. on the 3DS, a a truly handheld console, um, that, like, new region, I thought that region, the way it was characterized, it felt so, like, new and fresh. I loved all the callbacks to prior generations yes. and, like, all of that. Yeah, like, there was so much love. And, and, and I and I, at the time, I really liked the change-up from the gyms. I really liked that at the time. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah that was yeah. cool. I They kind of, did they, no, gyms came back, ju- gyms just came back, came back. I was kind of thinking, like, oh, maybe, like, when the... When they switch to the trials, I was like, maybe they're just done with gyms now. What if they like? What in what other ways can they uh, reinvent this? Uh, but they did just kind of come back. I remember I liked the idea, but then I played through it and went, "No, we need gyms." I I liked it a lot. I I'm so happy that Moon is actually your favorite game because that's <laughs> it's a great one. I like the Ultras better, but I I feel very similar to you that like when Pokemon Sun and Moon came out, I was like just ready for a good Pokemon yes. game. And it, it well, and they made you ready, too. Those trailers were hype, and we were, they were like hype every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It all I, comes I probably, together. I, Ultra Moon is probably, like, a better one, but just because of, like, you know, hitting for the that first the time first, where right. I was, that was the one. That was the one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I get it. I get it. 
Very so good what answer. what was your first Pokemon game? And then like I think you did allude to like a Pokemon break. I think all Pokemon yeah. fans have ha- experienced a break from the franchise yeah. at some point. Um, yeah. So my first Pokemon game was Pokemon Blue. Uh, yeah, just like un unstoppable flood of memories with that game. Uh, I've got two brothers. Just like going to like a, I don't know why this sticks out of my brain, but going to a furniture store with my parents. Dude, I got sitting, some of those. Just like yeah, like, posting <laughs> posted up on a couch with dude. my older brother Jesse, dude, playing Pokemon, being like, Yo, where are you at, dude? Look at my Blastoise. Hey, do you guys yeah. have? You know, yeah. Do you guys have Bob's Furniture Stores? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's literally. I remember going to there, and they they would have like a candy aisle for the kids, and I'd always bring my Game Boy, and I would just be. My parents are looking for furniture. Great, great time of year. I'm playing Pokemon and eating. Yeah, so, uh, Pokemon Blue Game Boy. I'm sorry. What was the second part of this question? Like you said, you you had a break. Oh uh, my break! Right before Pokemon uh, Moon. Yeah. So um. So what it really was is that I just despised Gen Four for some reason. Yeah. And I think I think maybe it was just where I was in in my like maturity as a human being. But like when that game came out, I I remember I got Pokemon Diamond. I was excited for it, and it was the first time in my life where I was playing a Pokemon game, and I went, "This is not hitting right." This is, I think everything's like a little dark and weird looking. I, these Pokemon designs ain't for me. Like Mm -hmm. I, yeah, just something about gen four. I just like, didn't, I I didn't vibe with it. And I will say I actually, because I had such a negative opinion of it. I think I had a really nice experience with brilliant diamond. I like that. And, and it, yeah. And it kind of redeemed it in my eyes in a way. And it it was nice to get back to um, that kind of design of uh, Pokemon world, Pokemon uh, like level design and stuff like that. Um, BDSP was P- BSP was a lot of fun, and I remember playing it, being super excited for it, and I I, I did have a lot of fun with it. I, it. It's and and whenever I think back on it, is when I get disappointed because it's like mm. it's the only remake that didn't add really that much. I mean, it did add some things, but it's I don't know. It's hard tough to say because I say it doesn't add things, but it added the underground. It added all the legendaries at the end of the game. There were a lot of things added to it, um, but yeah, I don't know. I just you know I, really I, I, I want to give that a, I want to give that a on- fair shake. Yeah, something that really opened my eyes about this kind of game, um, about that kind of game, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, is that um, I had tried playing Pokemon games with my fiance, who plays some video games before. Mm. I'd like get her one of the versions. She tried, she bounced off, and she loved Shining Pearl. Just absolutely was like, I That's love awesome. the top down style. I love like the the way that the characters are drawn. All of this stuff. It like spoke to her. And um, I, I'm always keeping my eye out for stuff like that. That because Pokemon is such a big brand, it's like sometimes I run into people. One of my really good friends who streams Pokemon, she um, like didn't like Legends Arceus because she's not. The, she's just not the kind of person that wants to aim. She just doesn't want to do any aiming. And that's I was fair. like, you know, I, I was like, I get that, dude. Like that's yeah, I, I I totally see that perspective. So just something I I try to keep an open mind about. Yeah, yeah, that's Smart. awesome. Yeah. I I agree with with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I've said it before on the podcast, but just. I, I don't really replay Pokemon games that much. So yeah. the last time I had played it was was back when it came out. And this was just fresh. I had a good time. I mean, it didn't give us anything special, but it it was still good. Yeah. Yeah. I think the thing for me was that the art style felt, again, rushed. Or the art style felt incomplete. Coming mm-hmm. off, another thing Pokemon does a lot it is just is take inspiration from the Zelda franchise. And I feel like that was a direct response to people being like, we want top down, we want remakes, but then also uh, looking at the success of, uh, what was it, um, uh, the the, Zel- the top down Zelda game remake. Link's Awakening. Yeah, right, that, that toy art style. I think a Pokemon game that looks, it doesn't need to be like a toy art style, but something that, something that looks a little bit more deliberate when it comes to the art style, I think would be really cool. And BDSP felt just a little flat or I, I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. See, to me, the best thing to come out of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was the reaction videos from yeah. the first reveal trailer where That's it said, good. after 15 years, everybody's like, yes. Diamond and Pearl, Diamond and Pearl. And then it shows the chibi character and you see them all go. <laughs> yeah, those are good. Those are so funny. <laughs> so Jake, I, yeah. um, I'm really curious, like, I- I've watched a ton of your uh, Tears of the Kingdom coverage on Game Explain over the last few months. Um, I'm still playing the game. I, I still am yeah. about to battle Ganon, so maybe let's cool. not do spoilers, but okay. um, <laughs> what do you think the next Zelda game is going to be? I, mean, I think we are going to get DLC. <laughs> we'll definitely get DLC. <laughs> yeah, um, 
Yeah, Zelda, it's, it's, you know, Tears of the Kingdom is cool because we got a look into the eyes of the, into the minds of the developers at Nintendo, and we got to ask them, what did you guys think was cool about Breath of the Wild? And what they chose to focus on in the sequel, I think, would answer that question. And for them, it's what I call it in, in, in my Game Explained content, I call it um, tweetable moments. Little things that are maybe not really pertinent to what you're doing in the game or the narrative, but little things that make you go, oh, that's neat. And yeah. then you share them and a bunch of people think that. Yeah. So I think that they have found a little niche for themselves with um, Zelda and that idea. And there's always a chance that they um, go back to basics give people a more traditional Zelda experience that they want with dungeons and kind of like the lock and key level design type of thing that I think has kind of aged out for Nintendo and they see yeah. it's very popular in the indie space and I think that they th maybe think that that has taken that so they don't need to be doing it. So I think it's going to be more. I think it's going to be this kind of like genre pushing AAA experience that is going to lean even more into systems and physics. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, you introduce the ability to like attach anything together and build stuff. That's all well and cool, but it actually copies and pastes a lot of systems from Breath of the Wild that remain the same. Um, the weather system, for example, is exactly the same. The cooking system is exactly the same. And I think you could develop a lot of these things to make them more interesting. Um, going into the ocean, for example, like if we see a new Zelda trailer and it has Link, like, dive yeah. into an underwater palace or something we're all gonna go yeah that's true you know and you then sky, we're gonna, you have underground right. nay of water that's actually then, really cool yeah and then the next you know and then the next trailer will be for the pokemon game and it'll just be dun, 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 dun. you know no i'm just kidding <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah yeah so i think i think i that's think they true. found what's interesting to them about zelda and i think it's gonna gonna keep uh developing in that direction and pushing the genre in that way yeah. well so so the the main thing that i'm curious about is like yeah what like if they are gonna make i mean i would imagine they're gonna make another game in this in the in the engine of breath of the wild Wild, right i would imagine they're going to try to reuse that in some way as you're saying but yeah. are we going to be looking at a six-year wait again because if that's true that's going to be like the first time that a new nintendo system does not launch with a zelda game right we were talking yeah. about earlier no pokemon game on on the new switch what if we don't have a zelda game on the new switch right what is that going to look like yeah, so I think uh, I think to me the answer to this is clear is that we will have uh, some kind of partnership develop a, develop uh, Zelda games that are not necessarily the thing that is the next big 3D Zelda. Right. Um, I and agree. I, I yeah, and I think it's pretty likely that we'll see something more in the lines of like your Link's Awakening, your uh, Link mm -hmm. Between Worlds. Uh, which I honestly think that the fan base could really use right now. Yeah. Uh, plus, we will see re-releases of things like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, which have yet to come to the Switch. And that will help us uh, space out some time. Because I because I do think that we will see something with the name Zelda roughly every 12 to 100%. 18 months. 100%. And yeah. So so it's so the if the question is then will it be like 6 years until that next big follow up to Tears of the Kingdom? Probably. But I also think that that's okay. Um yeah. 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 I could okay. I can segue that easily into Pokémon. That's like the same kind of deal that we've got going on right now. Or like they're trying to follow a similar pattern. Uh, just going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, like the next game next year could very well not be developed by Game Freak. Like, I could 100% see that being the case. And they just keep it going like that until the next generation, which, you know, Zelda doesn't have that the generation fan title, but that's basically what we're talking about here, the same right. kind of thing. Yeah, I think, so, I think the lineup that you're trying to, uh, or the structure of the timeline that you're, that you're kind of thinking about, Soul, is like, we have, we're supposed to have a Switch 2 come out in 2024, right? There's supposed Apparently. to be a... a yeah, apparently, which is this be is right. like, I've I've known about this thing for a long time, <laughs> so this is like the third or fourth like delay because yeah. the last we heard from that one it was week, supposed to be out spring this year at one point. Yeah, they the, said the, last year would be this year. Mm -hmm. The last so, we heard was was spring next year, so now it's fall next year. So yeah, so for year. listeners, what we're looking at is DLC in. At the end of this year, 2023, right? Potentially DLC at the beginning of 2024, potentially, if 
that winter gets pushed out into 2020. Yeah, one is September, one will be December, January. And then, yep, and then we're looking at a switch to uh, somewhere in the year. So then we're all, we would also expect a Pokemon game at the end of next year, which could be that these, uh, you know, Generation 5 remakes. And then the following year, 2025, is actually when, I think, right, yeah, is when actually we would expect a Generation 10 because it would have been three years after generation the launch of Generation 9. However, a lot of people are speculating, could that be pushed out to line up with the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Pokemon franchise? So there's like a window of time there, those couple years where we don't totally know what's going to happen. Um, but I think it's, I, I don't know, I think it's really interesting. I love the word expeculating. Yeah. Did I say, uh, did what yeah. I say? It's like expecting and speculating at the same did time. Did I say the same? Oh, I didn't yeah, you that. did, but it worked. Uh, expeculating. Guys, I hate to do this to you, but I've got to pull the ripcord. I'm being summoned away. Ooh. Uh, so oh, I, I, I hope that doesn't completely blow whatever systems are, are working in the background here. But no, uh, I just wanted to, I wanted to, of course, thank you all for having me again. Yeah, thank you for being here. And it didn't come up, but I just want to do a little shout out. I am so thirsty for a mystery dungeon game. I'm uh, one of those people. It wasn't going to come it. up, so that's great that you brought yeah, it up. You're, you're I kidding. just, <laughs> I love those games. If it's a, if it's a remaster of like the second ones that came out, I loved that story. I'll play it again. I'll do it. I don't care. I just want it feeds something in me. I would love to see a new mystery dungeon game. So if that rumored presents is happening like next week or whatever, and there's yeah. a mystery dungeon game, just have a little, have a little sparkle in your eye because you know somewhere I'm, I'm happy. Okay. Well, Jake, yeah, Jake, thank you so much for being here. If you want to give a plug right now, feel free. Sure. Uh, you can follow me on X uh, <laughs> at, at Jake Knows It. Knows like the thing on your face. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know to uh, to follow me. But, of course, if you want to follow Game Explain, YouTube.com slash Game Explain, that's really easy. You know how to find that. I'm doing all sorts of crazy things over there. I've gotten a little unhinged recently. I, re I recently recorded I like a, de a debate. With my evil oh, twin. Oh, dude. Yeah, I saw that. That was amazing. So I, yeah, so my, my evil twin, Jack. Uh, so if you're curious about We're having about him on that, next week, actually. Right, right. Oh, God. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a punk, so watch out. We'll, we'll talk leaks then, hopefully. We'll talk, yeah, <laughs> right, right. He'll, he would love that conversation. Um, but yeah. thank you all again for having me. Uh, hopefully, follow, reach out. Tell me, uh, tell me why my Pokemon opinions are bad, please. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Jake. Thank you, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye, Jake. See ya.